All right, let's do this. Okay. Hey guys, welcome to today's video. The first video in the new beauty studio. My husband and I just moved into our new house and boy oh boy, was this a beast to set up. But that's a video for a different day. Today, we're talking about how to make your everyday makeup last all day. I pulled you guys over on YouTube community posts and by far the biggest makeup grievance was making your makeup last all day. So as a makeup artist for 10 years and someone that did bridal for over six years, even myself wearing makeup, having to go to events all the time. At this point, I'm a little bit of a connoisseur on how to make the makeup last all day, and I'm gonna give you tips for everybody. Dry skin, combo skin, oily skin, mature skin. There's tips for everybody. So get cozy and get ready to take some notes. Also, I wanna take a second to say thank you to One Size Beauty for sponsoring today's video. I have wanted to work with One Size Beauty for so long because there's genuinely so many products that have made it into my routine, especially this like make it last all day routine. Is anybody really that surprised that Patrick Starr is out here making makeup that lasts? So thank you very much One Size Beauty because this is a little bit of a dream. So we're gonna start out with skin prep. A lot of people don't realize that the texture of your skin, if you have a buildup of dead skin cells, that's really gonna hurt the makeup throughout the day. Cause you gotta think, if you have a buildup of dead skin, that dead skin is shedding and trying to get off. So if that skin is trying to leap off the face while you got makeup on top, of it, she gonna take the makeup with her. So I have three Holy Grail products that are gentle and exfoliate like no one's business to make your skin just feel like smooth glass and the makeup looks so much less cakey and more natural. So my Holy Grail is the Fenty Pre-Show Glow. This bad boy is like the Mac Daddy. I use this maybe once a week. It comes with this little mitt. Both of these are wet because I just use them in the shower. Once a week, rub this on, leave it on for 30 to 60 seconds in the shower, wash it off, your face is like glass. Now another chemical exfoliator that's a little bit more gentle and I can't find it in the move, my stuff is everywhere, is the Pixi Glow Peel Pads. These you can use maybe every three days. They're a little bit more gentle and it's just more of a consistent kind of routine if you don't wanna do the one day a week Mac Daddy Fenty skin. Now for physical exfoliator, I have fallen in love with this and I've used this given, uh, I've turned my sisters onto this, everybody, because I've never found a better physical exfoliator. This is the Get That Grime Face Scrub from Florence by Mills. It is such a finely milled grit. I don't like something that is too abrasive or is like the plastic beads. It is gentle, but it really gets the dead skin off. Those are my holy grails. So that's super simple to do once or twice a week. Now now we're talking about skincare, the morning skincare routine before your makeup. So a lot of people don't realize that the biggest culprit when it comes to messing up your foundation, making it come off throughout the day or just crease, really any problem, isn't your primer or a lot of the times the powder or other makeup products, it is your skincare, especially your moisturizer. If you have combination and oily skin, you wanna use something more lightweight. So for me, being more combination and oily in my T-zone, I like to use in the morning the Caudalie Vino Perfect Serum. Not only is this gonna even out my skin tone because it just takes the redness away, it's such a beautiful serum, but it's very lightweight and really sinks into the skin. Next up, is eye cream. I love anything, honestly, Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair. This is the eye concentrate, so it's much thinner. It's not a heavy cream because again, when it comes to concealer under the eyes, if we're doing a very thick, heavy cream during the day, that might end up kind of manipulating or changing your concealer formula and maybe causing it to crease or just settle a little bit more than it would. So my goal in the morning is things that are very lightweight and emollient that are gonna sink into the skin. And it, even though it's advanced night repair, you can wear this during the day. It's really just super hydrating ingredients and anything from the advanced night repair line actually works on a 24 hour cycle. So I can put this on in the morning, it's gonna last me and do its job for a whole 24 hours till the next morning and then at night time, I can use a little bit of a more heavy duty, richer cream, maybe something that has a retinol in it or an active that's going to really help me for anti-aging while I sleep. Then for moisturizer, I've been loving the Drunk Elephant. What is this? Pep? 
teeny, pro teeny, pro teeny peptide moisturizer. I, peptides, I mean anti-aging like nobody's business, and I find this to be a very lightweight cream. The other culprit of messing up your makeup is you're probably using too much moisturizer. That is literally all I'm using. Less is more when it comes to the moisturizer because we don't want this thick, heavy layer of moisturizer under foundation because it's just not gonna make our makeup happy. And lastly, SPF. So I've recently fallen in love with this very indie brand at Ulta. It is a brand called Dune. So not only is this a completely invisible gel SPF 30, but it has ingredients for 72 hours of hydration, reduces fine lines and wrinkles, is dermatologist tested and fragrance free. I'm not even kidding you, this color, it comes out like green. And because it is so invisible, I can use as much as I need to to get that SPF coverage, but look at this. It doesn't even start with a white cast and literally feels like I'm putting a moisturizer on. Ever since I discovered this, I genuinely have not been using another SPF. The skin is prepped, it is protected, Look how just glass-like smooth. I'm telling you, the Fenty Pre-Show Glow and a skincare routine like this in the morning, my God, is your makeup gonna look good? Let's dive into the makeup. So I like to start with my eyes because let's be real, everyday makeup, we're doing it quick. We don't have time for our eyeshadow or eyeliner, mascara to fall out and mess up our base. So even when I started bridal clients, I always started their eyes first so I could just wipe away any problems or fallout or issues and not worry about messing up my base. So we're starting out with brows. If you don't have oily brows, you can go right in and fill your brows. If you do find that the oil is kind of making your brow product come off throughout the day. I'm just taking a little bit of the translucent powder we're gonna use and I run this through the brow just to mattify and take away any oil or shine before we start. And the brow pencil is gonna go on so much easier. So for brow pencil, I am using the Rare Beauty brow pencil. I almost couldn't find this when I was preparing for this video in the move. Let me tell you, this is so much become my favorite brow pencil that when I thought I couldn't find it, I was in a sheer state of panic because I've been using this for quite a while now and it's blown all other brow pencils out of the water for me. It is the perfect texture, glides on like a dream. It's not too dry where it's gonna crumble and break or crack on you, but it's also not too waxy that it's gonna like almost cling to your brow hairs, you know, that gross feeling that some brow pencils give you. And when you blend it with the spoolie, it actually kind of blurs it and blends it without removing the product. For the eyelids, I like to use concealer to prime my lid because I have a lot of redness and discoloration. But if you find that your eyeshadow is really creasing on you and you wanna use a primer, I love the NYX Ultimate Primer. It just really grips for me. But another thing you can do is put a little bit of concealer on the lid and actually mix your primer right on in so you get the best of both worlds. And see how much more even the tone of our lid is. It just looks a lot more awake and it's hiding all of that redness. And then if you end up going in with eyeshadow, it just makes the eyeshadow look a lot cleaner and less messy because your natural kind of redness or veins or just discoloration isn't bleeding through. I forgot to mention that I am using the Natasha Denona High Glam Concealer and a great option if you have more mature skin and want something super lightweight with beautiful hydration is the NYX Bear With Me, come on, Bear With Me Serum Concealer. Both work beautiful as primer on the lid and under the eyes. So you don't need to do this as well, but I like to take a little bit of that translucent powder and just set that. It's gonna prevent any creasing and it's gonna make our eyeshadows blend out better that we have this nice layer of almost Think of it as priming powder down on the lid. Now for eyeshadow, like I said, we're keeping it simple. This is every day. So I'm gonna go in with the Patrick Ta Major Dimensions 3 palette. It's a beautiful neutral all matte palette. I'm going in with this transition shade here. I believe it's the shade crucial, but I don't really understand the kind of numbering system on the back. And on a nice fluffy brush, we're just gonna squish her right into the crease and circular motions, just run this back and forth 
all through our crease. Now you can leave it at this, pop on some mascara and you're done, but I'm just gonna beef it up a little bit. So now I'm gonna take the dark brown shade right there on a little bit more of a defined brush and I'm just gonna pack this on the outer third of the eye just to add a little bit of dimension and kind of contouring in this area and deepening it up is gonna kind of contour the eye a little bit and actually end up giving you some lift. Do you see that difference already? Once I have most of it down, I just like to switch right back to the first brush that I used and use that to blend. That way we don't put any more of this darkness on the lid and end up getting a little raccoony. And lastly, to finish off the eye, I'm gonna take this bone color right there on a little bit more of a fluffy but pinched brush and and we're just gonna go ahead and pack this right on the lid. There we go, three colors, bippity boppity boo, the eyes are done. Now here is really why I start with the eyes because I could just blend the eyeshadow exactly how I needed to and now I can just take a makeup wipe or a cotton round with some micellar water and just clean up that edge. Now for eyeliner, we are using the One Size Point Made Eyeliner. As you can see, she is well loved. I love this eyeliner so much. I feel like Miss White from Clue because she is matte black, one of the most matte black liners. And the reason for me that's so important is because a liner that shows shine, that isn't matte, especially if you have fine lines or wrinkles, is going to accentuate that texture where a matte liner is gonna do the opposite. So another reason I love doing the kind of eyes first trick is once we clean this up, now I know exactly the angle to do my liner. And also as someone that really likes my lashes or my mascara to be the star of the show. I'm a big believer in a half liner. So as you can see, I just brought it out right there on that line and then went straight in and I stopped my liner halfway in right about there because you'll see when I finish, it's gonna give much more lift to the eye. Alrighty, so give that a look. Look at the difference in the lift in this eye versus this eye. Because I didn't bring that down, we're leaving all of that inside open and it is giving all of that lift. This is a trick I always did on mature skin. When you bring that liner all the way down in, it's just closing off the eye and is contradicting all of the lift that the outside is giving. Now I do like to tight line, meaning putting a little bit of liner up here. For the life of me, I cannot find my pencils that are the most long wearing, which are the Urban Decay and the House Labs pencils. I don't know where they are in the move, so I'm just using one of the Makeup Forever artist pencils. Also the e.l.f. no smudge pencil is great for the waterline without worrying about it transferring down. Now for mascara, every day I love a tubing mascara because it comes off at the end of the day so easily. This is the KVD Full Sleeve Mascara. This one is cry proof, is tear proof, but it's not waterproof. So when you wash your face at the end of the day, it literally just comes off like little tubes. It is the easiest mascara to get off. And listen, if you're wearing mascara every single day, we all know the struggle of your eyes being rubbed raw from washing this mascara off every single day. Now, if you know me, you know I don't get out of bed without lashes on. Listen, I fully understand 99% of you are not gonna be wearing lashes on an everyday basis, but I wanna throw in if we are lash soul sisters and you don't leave the house without them either, these are the Kiss Impress lashes. They are by far the easiest eyelashes I have ever used in my life. They are press on lashes. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about those because I actually just uploaded an entire video showing you how to use these, so make sure to check that out after this if you are interested. Alrighty, eyes are done, now for complexion. So if you have combo and oily skin, this is a makeup artist secret that I feel like not enough people talk about, and that is blotting papers. Girl, I already did my skincare, and just in the time I did my eyes, mama got oily. I don't wanna put makeup on top of oil, so I'm gonna use this blotting paper just in the areas I get excessively shiny to make sure I'm taking that oil off before we even start. I mean, girl, look, 
Yeah. It's not cute. But now we got that oil off and we know we're not putting anything on top of it. Now, I'm not a big fan of primer. As somebody that is combo and oily, I don't like having something thick between my skin and the foundation. And even as far as any other concerns that a primer can address, like blurring or smoothing, I like to make sure I have those attributes in the foundation that I'm using. I really just want oil control and lasting power. This is what the whole video is about. And there is nothing better than the one size on till dawn mattifying setting spray. Even if you have dry skin, I'm telling you, this is going to change the game for you. So I like to use this in a way called the sandwich method, which means we are doing this first, doing our complexion and then finishing with this to get extra grip and lasting power throughout the day. So before we start any of our base on top of the skincare and our SPF, we are gonna spray away. Now for foundation, it really depends on your skin type when it comes to a foundation that is gonna last all day on you. For me, my holy grail being combo and oily, getting shiny in my T-zone, and having large pores is the Dior Forever Matte and the Dior Backstage. The Dior Backstage compared to the other one is a little lighter for me. I like this one for kind of everyday and softer coverage. But I do have this beautiful little graph for you depending on your skin type. Here are honestly kind of my holy grail foundations that I really think will wear like a dream on you and you won't have to worry about it coming off throughout the day. Now, when it comes to liquids, I'm a big believer in less is more. Liquids oftentimes are what is going to get a little creasy and heavy. So as you can see, this is all we have on and I'm just gonna blend this out and really stretch her out. And the beauty of exfoliating and doing a good skin prep routine like we started with is that you can really stretch a foundation out without it aggravating any texture or looking kind of cakey. So that's all I have left on my hand and I'm just gonna dip in and build up and give myself a little bit more coverage anywhere I feel that I need it. Alrighty, that is it. That is all we're using. And trust me, even if you need a little bit more coverage, do not fear because we will get it, but from a product that is gonna last a lot better on the skin than any liquid will. Now we're gonna go back in with the Natasha Denona High Glam Concealer and just use a little bit where we need it. No need to pile on the concealer like everyone is showing you you need to. I do do like to do what the hell? I do like to do a little bit of it out here just to kind of highlight and give me a little bit of that lift. This is the House Labs Concealer Brush. It's had a choke hold on me ever since I used it. And if you would like, not a necessary step, you can use a little bit of concealer to highlight these areas. The cupid's bow, the nose, and the center of the forehead just for a little bit more brightness. I like to set my under eyes right away. Let's say I'm even doing creams, which we're not today. We're gonna leave it simple and just use powder, bronzer, contour blush, but I like to set my under eyes right away because I don't want them to crease. I have two holy grail powders for that. I love the one size ultimate setting powder. I am using the shade ultra pink. And if you have mature skin and you really want a super lightweight powder, I love the NYX HD powder. This thing is so finely milled, it's like smoke. Look at that, that's how finely milled it is. But what I'm gonna do is just take a little bit of my one size powder in the lid on a fluffy brush, really disperse this, tap off the excess. And before I set anything, I'm just gonna make sure nothing creased while I was doing those other areas. We don't wanna set creases. It's like ironing a shirt. We wouldn't run an iron over a wrinkle. Same with this. Now that we have any creasing blended out, I'm just gonna take this and press it right on top of that concealer to set everything. I love this one size powder so much. Mrs. White again. Not only does it just set everything like a dream, but I find in these areas that I have large pores on the sides of my nose, it blurs like nobody's business. And when you're doing a little bit more of a full coverage, especially with the pink powder, 
baking this under the eyes is just gonna give you so much beautiful brightness. Now for setting the complexion. I think this is one of the most misunderstood steps. When I worked in retail cosmetics, at counters, at Sephora, I would always have people tell me my makeup is coming off throughout the day, and I would ask them if they're using a setting powder, and they would always tell me no, but I have a setting spray, and I would explain to them that they are not really doing the same thing. Really think that your setting powders are setting liquid, and setting spray is setting powder. Setting spray is not going to set a liquid in place, and unset liquid on the skin is gonna move throughout the day. So to really get that long wear, you have to set your liquid with a little bit of powder. And I know people can be afraid of that, but I'm telling you, when you're using a really high quality powder like this or the NYX or the powder foundation we're gonna use to kind of fill the gaps of coverage that I didn't wanna put a ton of liquid on, it's not gonna make you look heavy and crease. So if you have dry skin, you can use that NYX, dust it all over. Same thing with this, dust it all over. But for me, that has combination and oily skin, I want to show you something that is going to change the game, especially for pore filling and leaving your makeup on all day. Two words, powder puff. We have a little bit of that one size powder in our lid. We're gonna dip in, and what I like to do is really work it into the puff, just on my arm or my hands. And to really make this makeup last all day, I take this and press and roll this powder right into the skin. My God, is this gonna keep everything in place for you all day? day, especially for me on my nose, and I find using a powder puff actually ends up making this, this powder smooth and blur my pores much more than using a brush. All right, we have the skin set, and now, like I said, I did back off my liquid because I didn't wanna use a ton of liquid because that's what always causes the issues for me, and we are gonna pick up the slack with probably my favorite beauty product on the market, the One Size Turn Up The Base Powder Foundation. Foundation. So I am using the shade Light One, and on a fluffy brush like this, I'm just gonna take this powder, tap off the excess, and I'm just going to press and roll this on the skin. See how I'm moving my hand here? Where I feel like I need a little bit more coverage. So see that discoloration right there? I do this because I think powder creases so much less on you than liquid does and gives you that long wear like nobody's business. Look how much just eh more coverage that gave us and we have literally barely any liquid foundation on. This powder is also beautiful for mature skin. I honestly got to the point with my clients where I couldn't not use this powder to pick up the slack for my liquid. And even here, I'm going in with the shade Fair One, so this is lighter. And on clients with mature skin that I didn't even wanna put any concealer out here, I would take a lighter shade and actually use this to brighten up this outer corner because it gave coverage without accentuating any texture the way liquid does. Look at that brightness and lift from that. And it is so much softer and more natural than liquid concealer. Now for bronzer, I'm gonna go in with the Juvia's Place Bronzer Palette. I love these, they are affordable. You are getting two shades. I'm gonna go in with the deeper of the two. And I like to press my bronzer like this. I don't like to swipe because think, we just spent that time getting our base perfect. I ain't going back and forth on it like that. Get out of here. I am stippling it on because it's still going to deposit and blend the color, but it's not going to move the base around underneath. I'm going to show you another use for that one size powder that's going to change your life as well when we're done with bronzer and blush. A little bit under the cheekbones and with my bronzer, I'm usually a little bit more liberal because we're warming the complexion back up. Now, totally unnecessary step, but if you would like to contour, meaning you're gonna use a little bit more of a cool tone color rather than the warmth, this is going to sculpt the skin a lot more. Think of this like chiseling out the skin a little bit more. So this, we're really gonna keep isolated down in the pocket of that cheekbone because we wanna add that shadow and slightly blend up. So see that difference in the side? See how we're getting more of a contoured sculpted look than just the general bronzing warmth on the other side. Now you can of course use whatever blush you like. I did lie to you a little bit. I am gonna go in with a liquid blush. So this is the Moira Love Steady 
liquid blushes. And if it's a good liquid or cream formula, she can totally go on top of powder absolutely fine. This is in the shade Chemistry. I really wanna use this one because I love the tone. And I don't really quite have this one in a powder. Moira has two formulas in this blush. It is a radiant and a matte. I love the matte because like I am showing you here, it's honestly almost like a cream to powder. It's so beautiful. Oh, see what I mean about that shade. Ooh, it is giving fall. Now that our blush is on, I wanna show you that other little trick. So you can do it in this order where you do your liquid foundation, set everything with that translucent powder, do your bronzer and blush, and then go in with the powder foundation because what I love to do is take the powder foundation and dip in on a little fluffy brush. And I love using the one size powder for cleaning up the edges of my bronzer and blush. So see in areas like this where everything could be slightly cleaner, I just like to take this powder and run it over the edges of our bronzer and blush to really airbrush and just blur everything. Look at that difference already. Just the edges being much more soft and gradient than if we just left them on the harsher side. It sounds silly, but I would honestly recommend getting this one size powder in two shades, one for brightening under the eyes and in the center of the face, and then one that matches your skin tone perfectly because I'm doing the same thing here, just blending the insides out a little bit with that lighter shade just to brighten everything, but still keep all of that beautiful brightness that we had to begin with. To finish up under the eyes, I'm just gonna go back in with that very first shade we started Patrick Ta with, the transition shade. And I'm a big believer in doing shadow under the eye and not liner, because I think liner in the creases is just gonna move around on you and kind of potentially crumble and crease throughout the day and look a little bit raccoony, where you know a powder is gonna stay exactly where you put it. So I like to take my transition shade and run this along the lash line or the lower lash line, I should say, only about 75% of the way in. And then if you wanna do something a little bit deeper, I'm dipping into the dark brown we did on the outer corner and I'm just hugging that much closer to the lash line, only on the outside half. A little mascara on the lower lash line and I love this KVD mascara for my lower lash line because the brush is that kind of almost rubbery, spiky brush, so it doesn't kind of get everywhere. And again, man, with these one size powders, if you even go too low with your eyeshadow, I just always have these front and center on my desk because I use them to clean up so many things. So I just dipped in the lighter, brighter one, and I'm using that to blend out the edge of the eyeshadow we smoked out on the lower lash line. I'd rather blend out the edge with something so that I'm not just taking off the concealer underneath. Now to set the brows, I love my e.l.f. Dual Ended Clear Brow Gel and Mascara. So affordable and does not dry down white and crusty, but holds my brows in place like nobody's business. Now for lips, it's totally preference. It depends on what you're comfortable wearing. If you want a liquid lipstick that you don't have to retouch, that's your gig. But if you want something comfortable, I mean, you can literally get a tinted lip balm for, you know, whatever works for you. I've been loving for everyday comfortable lips. These new lipsticks from Ravi Beauty, this is in the shade Lily. It is one of the most comfortable lips I've ever worn to the point that it almost feels like a lip balm and I keep putting it on and I'm like, oh wait, there's color to this. Like, Calm down. And these, the more you put on, the more opaque the color is gonna be. So I wanted to show you the color on its own. I normally pair this with a lip liner. The other two shades from Ravi Beauty are a little bit richer, but like I said, I like this nude because I don't mind going in with a lip liner for everyday makeup, but I'm gonna go in with Makeup Forever in Wherever Walnut. Ooh, God, you can't go wrong with that color. Oh, how beautiful is she? All right, you know what time it is. Last step in our sandwich method. Back to the one size on until dawn, setting spray. Okay, all right, moment of truth. Girl, what did I tell you? Look at my makeup still. Look at my base. This is in 4K, people. Nobody does it like one size. And there we have it, guys. All of my tips and tricks for making your makeup last all day long. And when I do my makeup and leave the house, if I bring anything with me to touch up, you guessed it, the one size translucent 
or the Turn Up the Base Powder Foundation. Nine times out of 10, it ends up being the powder foundation because if I do need to do touch-ups, I would like to be able to deposit a little bit more color because a translucent powder can take the shine away, but if your makeup is breaking up throughout the day, which after watching this video, it will not, I like to be able to build up a little bit more coverage with the powder foundation. I hope you took away tons of tips and tricks from this video. Once again, thank you to One Size Beauty for sponsoring today's video. God, I love your products so much and I'm telling y'all if you get anything from this video I cannot do my makeup without these products. Let me know your tips and tricks down in the comment section as well as any other videos you would like to see from me. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was so fun filming the first ever video in the new studio. Wherever you are I hope you are happy safe and healthy and I will see you on the next video. Bye bye guys.